What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today we're taking a look at one of the most exciting launches of wireless earbuds of this year, and that is the Beats Fit Pro. So this year, there's been a ton of offerings on the market, and especially in like the mid price point, we're seeing a lot of great features of sound quality, noise cancellation, and just a few months ago, I checked out the Beats Studio Buds. Overall, for the price of $159, they were pretty decent, but even with the noise cancellation, it definitely wasn't its best feature. It was a very good alternative option out there for anybody who is on like iOS or Android and not specific to one platform. This right here is a new product that comes out just after the Apple AirPods 3 did, and that is the Beats Fit Pro. Not only does it have an H1 chip with spatial audio, improved sound quality, a great fit that also works very well for fitness and like a very secure setup, but also active noise cancellation and a transparency mode that is fully natively controllable from iOS, and it comes in at a price of $199. So in this video, I'm gonna give you like a review of this after having some time with it, and also give like a pretty detailed comparison of that to the Apple AirPods 3, which comes in at about $20 cheaper, but doesn't have the active noise cancellation. And I also wanna give a huge thanks to The Daily Upside for sponsoring this video. If you guys would like to win a pair of Beats Fit Pro for yourself, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and also leave a comment down below about your favorite feature of these pair of earbuds. And also follow me over on Instagram and leave a comment with your username down below. And when this video hits 3000 likes, I'll be picking one of you in the comment section and messaging you over on Instagram. So as I mentioned, Beats already had a very solid, truly wireless option, which is the Beats Studio Buds. At $159, they were very compact. They came in a few different fun colors, including a bright red. They did have gesture control and also noise cancellation, which worked to some degree, but it definitely wasn't the best, but it didn't have the H1 chip. And with some of the great features of the Apple AirPods being associated with the H1, the automatic play pause, the improved skin sensors, as well as spatial audio, which has been a huge talk, I was especially excited when these Beats Fit Pro came out because it did have the H1 chip. And I've got to say, after having some time with it, when it comes to the sound quality, the characteristics of it, the noise cancellation features, the H1, and the price of $199, it is perhaps the most compelling option of the bunch at the moment for any Apple user out there looking for a native experience. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the design and comfort. And right off the bat, you're gonna notice that these do have kind of like an athletic approach that Beats has always had in their products when it comes to like the endorsement standpoint and also in the way that they design all of their earbuds to really lock into the ear and give you that great seal. And these are no different. If you go ahead and take a look at it, this actually does have like a nice wing to it and it also has a silicone tip. These actual ear fins are able to lock in really nicely and this wing kind of just pops into like the socket right here so if you're like going for a run or doing a workout these are going to be totally fine paired with the ipx4 rating right out of the box i went with like the medium fit and just placing it in like this you kind of have to like twist it in um, but overall it stays in position very very nicely and as you can see it actually does look very minimal in the ear so that is always nice it comes in at a weight of about 5.6 grams so it's about a gram and a half heavier than what you would find on the apple airpods but considering it does have the silicone fin that is able to really lock it in, I think it is worth it. So when it comes to the fit and design standpoint, I would say that these are extremely comfortable. And one feature that I also like is that there is a micro venting. So that just like allows you to release some of the compression uh, that you usually get when you wear earbuds for many hours at a time. And when it comes to like doing any running around, you don't really have to worry about these falling out, but I will say there is like a bit more of a pressure point on like the middle area of the ear compared to some of the other options that I've tried out in the past. When it comes to like the overall size though, these are definitely not like the most compact, but they're not large by any means. And when compared to the Beats Studio Buds, there are 30% more components inside and a 15% larger transducer. With that larger transducer though, the sound quality is definitely a big area to highlight. Overall, I found that it had like a very full characteristic and compared to like the Apple AirPods where it's like very clear and very honest, where the mids and the highs really do ring out, you still get like the very characteristic heavy bass that Beats has kind of always been known for. 
But the most important thing is that the sound isn't washed out or anything, but instead the bass just does really stand out, especially if you get into that higher volume and you're into like hip hop music, it has like a very nice punch to it. With the Apple H1 chip though, beyond having the characteristics of being able to very easily connect it to all of your Apple devices and sync between them and having the very quick response time of the play pause, the Siri support, the biggest thing about the H1 is the spatial audio. This is on the Apple AirPods Max, the AirPods Pro, the AirPods 3, and it gives you like a 3D sound experience that adapts to your head movements or also in a fixed mode. And it's just intended to give you a wider sound stage through the actual sound optimization and the gyroscopes and accelerometers that are built into these earbuds. I did find that the spatial audio was great to have on and it did add to the overall experience of giving you that wide sound stage and after testing the movement of like turning the head back and forth and just doing like day-to-day -day tasks, I personally do have the actual head tracking movement turned on when I use these earbuds. The adaptive EQ is also something that is enabled when the earbud is in the standard mode without any transparency or noise cancellation options enabled. And essentially what that does is that it uses the microphones that are pointed in the ear to tune the low and mid frequencies to the shape of your ear using Apple's computational audio technology. There is also support for 5.1, 7.1, and also Dolby Atmos. So if you have content that does support these audio technologies, then it's gonna be a great experience. But just in like day-to-day -day listening, streaming Spotify or Apple Music, having the spatial audio and the head tracking is already an amazing experience that you're definitely gonna notice if you come from something without it. I know a lot of these features that I'm talking about are very iOS specific and H1 and all that. And something about Apple AirPods is that no matter how good they are, they are, they are very targeted towards iPhone users. You really can't take advantage of many of the features. The experience is just not the same if you're over on Android. And with a lot of great competitive third party options available, I feel like if you're an Android user, you definitely shouldn't get Apple AirPods. But in this case, with the Beats earbuds, you can actually use the Beats companion app and still take advantage of many of the great features and technologies, which makes it a very compelling option for Android users. So when it comes to the sound quality overall, at the price of $199, I think it definitely does live up. The bass was really strong, the mids and highs definitely weren't washed out, but for some people, I will still say the bass could be a little bit on the overwhelming side. The sound definitely does have like a signature or like a character to it, which I'm going to talk about when we compare it to the Apple AirPods 3 after we go over all the other features of the Beats Fit Pro. Before I move on though, I want to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, The Daily Upside. In the morning when I'm just like having breakfast or drinking my coffee, I like to just read some light news and there's a ton of information out there. The Daily Upside is a free newsletter written by a team of former investment bankers, scholars, and journalists, and it's read by over 150,000 people, including retail investors and Wall Street professionals looking to get an edge on the markets. It skips over the headache of financial talking point jargon that traditional media uses, and instead, The Daily Upside is designed to be clear, interesting, concise, and unbiased, delivering you useful and meaningful information that you can read in under five minutes. And someone who is always interested in the world of finance and business and always trying to learn more, this is like a really great read in the morning. So go ahead and check that link down below to join the 150,000 people who wake up to the daily upside and get refreshing information backed by experts. As I said, it is absolutely free. And a huge thanks once again to the daily upside for sponsoring this video. So the next thing to talk about is active noise cancellation. And when you take a look at the market today, there are a ton of different options out there. Some of them at the lower end of $100, some of them at the $150 mark, and the other ones are closer to 200. And in Apple's case, 259 is the next level up in terms of a product that has the H1 chip with active noise cancellation. And in the Beats case, I feel like they've really slotted in the middle of Apple's lineup with the Beats Studio Buds coming in at a price of $159 and these coming in at $199 really bridging the gap between the Apple AirPods 2, the AirPods 3, and also the AirPods Pro. Something that the Beat Studio Buds had for $159 that made it a very compelling option was the fact that it did have active noise cancellation. But after testing that noise cancellation and the transparency mode, it honestly wasn't really that good. The active noise cancellation was able to help and I would say it's still good to have, but especially in the transparency mode, I found that like the microphone did have a bit of a delay when repeating the outside sound, making it pretty much like a useless feature, but at the price, it still had pretty decent sound quality and it 
also had that great Android support and it also looked very stylish and was compact to take around. In this case though, at $199, I would say the most exciting thing is like the active noise cancellation is very good. And I definitely did expect that because it has six microphones built in on the inside and outside that is able to detect the surroundings and adapt accordingly. And when it comes to like blocking out the outside noise of like transport in the bus, the humming noise of like airplanes and also voices, it was essentially able to plug things out completely. And in a lot of cases, it actually did rival the Apple AirPods Pro when it came to the amount of sound that it was able to block out from the outside world. And that really does contribute to the sound quality as well because with the bass and with the spatial audio, it just really does immerse you into the music completely that you just don't get with earbuds that don't have that active noise cancellation feature. It says that it utilizes the microphone to adapt the sound over 200 times per second, which on paper sounds really impressive, but just in like real world scenarios, I can say that it definitely does perform. On the transparency side of things though, it's nice that you're able to toggle between that on the iPhone natively through the control center. But to be honest, I would say that that is the one drawback of this earbud. Although it is able to work to some degree, it was very situational. If someone was like talking to me, a lot of times it wouldn't be able to detect that and I still wouldn't be able to hear them. And whether I was in just like the standard mode where there's no transparency and no noise cancellation or going into the transparency mode, I couldn't really tell the difference in some cases. Honestly though, at the price of $199, I wasn't expecting this to be perfect and that area of flaw is in the transparency mode. The active noise cancellation, the actual sound quality and the H1 are all features that already make it a great bang for buck. And I imagine most people out there are gonna be using the active noise cancellation a lot more than the transparency mode, but it's still something to keep in mind. When it comes to the battery life though, this is definitely another area that is very impressive. To be honest, the case is really nothing special. It is just like one that folds like a turtle shell and it is a little bit floppy. The case does open all the time. It is extremely slippery to hold and it is a little bit on the larger end, but Inside of it, it does house your earbuds with a little bit of space here. And generally speaking, if you're not too concerned about the case, it still gets the job done, but it's just not as good as the other ones that I've tried out so far. With that though, the battery life is six hours with active noise cancellation on and up to seven and a half hours in just the adaptive EQ standard mode, which is really impressive and more than what you get on a lot of the other options out there. Because on the market, I would say the average is between the six to eight hours, but a lot of times the active noise cancellation does drain the battery a lot faster. With the case, so you're able to get an additional 21 hours and with just five minutes of charge, you're able to get one hour of usage and it charges via USB type C on the back here. One thing that I did notice is that the USB C is actually pretty recessed which if you don't have the right cable or one that's just like a little bit wider, it could be a little bit of a problem to plug in. So overall, I don't really think this case is the best. It does feel a little bit cheap to be totally honest. And the battery indicator is on the front here. So overall, the battery life with the active noise cancellation on and just in the standard mode is really impressive for all the features, but the case is just nothing special. So just to wrap things up before we go into the comparison, for $199, you're getting a great value with the Beats Fit Pro. You have great sound quality, you have H1 chip and that seamless experience as well as native controls on iOS, and you also have active noise cancellation and overall works pretty well, paired with great battery life, an IPX4 water resistant rating, and also a great fit for anybody who does a lot of fitness, running around, and just needs something that is really able to lock into the ear and give you that security. I think going into the holiday season, this is gonna be a very popular option. But something else that is also gonna be heavily considered is the Apple AirPods. 3. And that is because it comes in at just $20 cheaper at a price of $179 and it is technically Apple's first party product. The Beats is obviously a company that is owned by Apple and with the H1 chip of both these options, great sound quality and also the ability to have spatial audio features, the Dolby support and all that, it is a really tough decision to decide between the two for myself as well. The Apple AirPods 3 just came out and I find that the sound quality characteristics are a little bit different to what you find on the Beats Fit Pro. With Apple's own earbuds, such as the AirPods and the AirPods Pro, it does give you more of like a fine tuned like honest referencing sound experience where the mids and highs really do ring out and it kind of goes for like a balanced characteristic. It's not to say that the bass isn't good, but generally speaking, I just find that the sound 
sound is a lot more balanced and personally, I actually prefer that sound signature a little bit more. But if you're into hip hop music and I know a lot of people love that bass, the Beats is by far the better option because it just has like a very full kind of focus in that area. But I think over the years, Beats' sound quality has improved significantly and that's because they've also focused on balancing out the mids and highs and ensuring that even with that bass prominence, it doesn't like kind of wash out the mids and highs, which are still very, very important. In terms of the comfort standpoint, the Beats Fit Pro fits better. It's no doubt about that. It locks in, it has like that fin, it has a silicone tip. It also gives you a much better seal overall. But I would say in terms of comfort, I personally like the AirPods 3 a little bit more. It just doesn't have as many pressure points and it just fits my ear shape a little bit better. But I do know people out there that just don't like the AirPods fit at all. And in that case, the Beats is gonna be the easy option for you. I think like the fit and comfort are two different things. If I were going for a run, 100% I would go with the Beats Fit Pro. But if I was just like walking around the house and just like casually doing some work, then I think over a longer period of time, the AirPods just fit my ear a little bit better. If you do need that noise cancellation though, for 20 bucks, definitely go ahead and buy the Beats. It is just a much better value overall. It's canceling out that outside noise using the microphones and it does a very good job of it. As I mentioned, the transparency mode doesn't really work that well compared to the AirPods Pro, but for the price of just $20 more, this is definitely the one to go with if that's what you prioritize. On the other hand though, if you're comparing it to the AirPods Pro, which come in at a price of over $250, do I think it's worth that extra money over the Beats Fit Pro? And the simple answer to that is no. For $199, you're getting very similar performance in the active noise cancellation, relatively similar sound quality with that bass prominence, and you also have the same Apple H1 chip with spatial audio. If you're looking for a better transparency mode and a better all-round earbud, this one is definitely going to win. The Apple AirPods Pro do a great job in terms of the sound quality, the actual sound signature, the noise cancellation, and the transparency mode. And the case also just comes in at a much smaller form factor, but at a price point of 30% more, I do have a bit of a tough time justifying that price difference. On the other hand though, if you're looking for Beats products between the Beats Studio Buds and the Beats Fit Pro, with that $40 price difference, I think some of the additional features in the Beats Fit Pro do make sense. Within the same lineup though, if I had to compare the Beats Studio Buds and the Beats Fit Pro at a price of $159 to $199, I think it really comes down to what you need. If noise cancellation is something that you don't use all the time, then $159 I think is a pretty good value for the Beats Studio Buds. And by no means do I feel like they're overpriced, even if the noise cancellation is not as good as I kind of expected. At a price of $199 though, the Beats Fit Pro does give you much better noise cancellation and noticeably better sound quality, but I still feel like if you're looking to get closer to $150 compared to $200, the Beats Studio Buds are still a great option to buy and for general music listening, you're gonna be very happy with it. I also like the fact that the case is shaped this way and just a lot more compact than the one on the Beats Fit Pro. But otherwise, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you think down in the comments section below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.